All right, everybody, welcome back to the EKG review here. My name is Reed. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe. I would love um, to be able to continue to share this with you. So we're going to start here and just look through here, and we'll see we've got five complex QRS that is quite regular. The rate here is, looks like it's roughly 300, 150, 175, 60, probably 65 beats per minute. And we said it's wide. Right, if you look down just from eyeball on it, say it's about 140 milliseconds. So let's take a look at what the atria is doing. Let's see, I look at lead one. I've got P waves in front of my QRSs that are upright in lead one. They're upright in AVF. So these are sinus P waves. That's important. A PR interval. First, I don't see any dropped beat through the rhythm strips, so that's good. So I have a lower suspicion for an AV block, but let's take a look. If you look at the PR interval, we're right at about 200 milliseconds. So we'll take it borderline. 200 milliseconds is the upper limit of normal. And so now let's evaluate that wide QRS. We said we have a wide QRS. Let's take a look at our axis. Our QRS is upright in lead one, and it is down going in AVF. So that means it is going up and to the left. So maybe some left axis. So what causes left axis? We think of left ventricular hypertrophy. So I look at the lateral leads. I don't see uh, very tall R waves in the lateral leads. So it's not left ventricular hypertrophy, but it's a wide QRS for the left axis deviation. Maybe this is a left funnel branch block. And so I look over at the lateral leads again. And I maybe start with V5, V6, and look at V6 here. It's got this R, S, R prime. You can even see a little bit of that R prime in V5, just subtly. Just subtly right there in V5. If you look at the high lateral leads in lead one and AVL, we definitely have this R, S, R prime. Very pretty R, S, R prime. Same thing in lead one. That R prime. Is showing late forces that are depolarizing through the ventricle because this person has a left bundle branch that is blocked. And so you can also see that in V1 where we have loss of the septal R wave. They've got that deep slurry S wave that indicates that the depolarization is going to go away. So if you're struggling with left funnel branch blocks, I've got a good video on it. You can take a quick look at it. And the last thing to do is to check our ST and T wave uh, for any abnormalities. And if you're familiar with left funnel branch blocks, these are always difficult because there's always this strain pattern where we have this reversal of our T wave. And there's going to be a little bit of, you know, uh, discordant ST elevation. And so that can sometimes be okay. And there is a criteria called the Scarbosa criteria that you should be familiar with if you're not. And it tells you um, the degree of concordant ST elevation that is required to um, diagnose a STEMI equivalent when someone with a left funnel branch block. My QT interval seems to be... Um, by eyeballing it looks good. Usually I look at the R to R interval and I look halfway between. And as long as my T wave is terminated by then, I would say there's not a long um, QT interval. And so what's my interpretation here? We've got our sinus rhythm on the left funnel branch block. So hope this helps. Have a good one.